Uh, Joe Funkhauser is our guest here on the program, a candidate for the House of Delegates 98th. Joe, good morning. Good morning, Rob, Bill, and Matt. Good to be here. Do you see what I deal with on a regular basis here, Joe? <laughs> Do I have cause for action, Joe? Do I need an attorney? I don't think quite on that matter, but uh, you know, just some good jabs thrown at you by your your friendly co-host there so, but um it's good to good to be on your show this morning and and i'm excited about this upcoming election so joe as a politician do you try this at home do you do you kind of rehearse or go over in your mind the questions that that a, a group like this may ask and 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 be ready with with that answer well i do like to prepare for my interviews just like i prepared at our uh debate for, uh, that the wrnr was uh kind enough to host two weeks ago and um, uh, so, but you know, you can throw anything at me. I'm all, I'm all, I'm all for it. And to be transparent with the people of Jefferson County. Very good. Let's get to it then, uh, Joe. Differentiate yourself between you and your opponent. What separates Joe Funkhauser from Barbara Fuller? Well, let me let me start by just saying how you know I'm I'm in this race because uh, I believe I'm the best candidate to represent and serve the people of Jefferson County's 98th district. Uh, I've, I've thought about it a lot and prayed about it a lot and talked to a lot of people that I know and respect, and that's why I'm uh, excited to throw my hat in the ring here and, and give the voters a choice in this election on who will best represent them in Charleston. And I believe I'm that choice because of my experience, my skills, abilities. I'm a a business and civil lit litigation attorney. I've uh, spent eight years on the Jefferson County's Farmland Protection Board, conserving Jefferson County. I have, you know, uh, uh, um, I've served with the horsemen's organizations and actually uh, advocated for them down in Charleston for for four years. So I have experience with the legislature there, and I'd like to bring those skills and experience to better serve the people of Jefferson County. I think we have. Um, a lot of challenges. We're in a growing part of the state. I've seen the way that the legislature has kind of refereed land use issues uh, over the last few decades. Um, Jefferson County is a little bit different than Berkeley County in terms of having the countywide zoning there. So I think all of those things uh, give me uh, the ability to do right by the people of Jefferson County. And that's always going to be my, my focus uh, is, is not um, uh, all the noise uh, of, of uh, the opinions out there, um, but my focus is going to be what is going to be the right thing for the people of Jefferson County and for the people of West Virginia. Sure. And so that's why I'm running, and I think there's um, some other distinctions there. I'm, I'm very pleased to have the endorsements of the West Virginia Farm Bureau, the West Virginia Citizens Defense League, and West Virginians for Life, um, pro-Constitution, pro-life, pro-God, pro-gun. I think there's a distinction there uh, based off of the West Virginia CDL's endorsement for me and, and my opponent in terms of the Second Amendment values. All right, very good. I was just about to ask you who your endorsements were from. I received an email yesterday from Mark Furman from the West Virginia Republican Assembly. He says they are endorsing your opponent in this campaign. Do you have any idea why you didn't get that endorsement or did you even try for it? I, I'm not actually familiar with that group. Um, so I, I don't know. They never sent me anything that I'm aware of. So um, that's I don't really have much comment on that. You know, she's mm -hmm. she's got to run her campaign. I've got to run mine. And um, so, uh, yeah, I don't really. Well, let me you ask know. you. A, hold on a second. Sure. Bill, I'm going to ask you some questions in regards to your work with uh, horses, uh, horse racing, the Horsemen's Association uh, in the state. If you could tell us some of your accomplishments in dealing with. Uh, on their behalf and some ways that you help to uh, make that situation better? Sure. Well, just to give some of your listeners a little bit of background, we have a, uh, the thoroughbred industry in West Virginia goes uh, uh, back a long way to when the, uh, you know, when before this country was probably founded um, in, with Charlestown or, or shortly after it was founded, you know, they were racing, racing horses down Main Street in, in Charlestown. Um, but it was actually officially uh, uh uh, be recognized in West Virginia law in 1933, I believe, when the Charlestown r racetrack w uh, was first established. Um, and we've had um, some 
uh, experience here in Jefferson County and, and to expanding our lottery based on our constitution. And with some referendums in 94, it did not pass to allow video lottery terminals. They, the legislature went and changed the law and guaranteed more to the industry as well as Jefferson County at large. And, it, and, and based off of that change, the, the people of Jefferson County approved that referendum in 1996. Uh, similar thing with table games in 2007, uh, Jefferson County rejected the referendum and the legislature went and changed made some changes and um, you know, to guarantee more to the, the thoroughbred racing and breeding industry as well as the county, Jefferson County. And in 2009, the Jefferson County uh, approved that referendum. So uh, the, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very uh, uh, strong industry for the, the Jefferson County in particular. There's about 5,000 jobs, over 500 million annual economic impact, about 15% of Jefferson County's workforce. So I think um, and what I've done, and particularly there, I, I, I helped to start a trade association. Most major industries in the state and the country, for that matter, they they um, they organize to sh share common goals and work together in a collaborative uh, approach. And so uh, we did that with the Charlestown Horsemen's HPPA the Mountaineer HPPA, which is the other track in the Northern Panhandle in Hancock County, as well as the West Virginia Thoroughbred Breeders Association and the Jockeys Guild. So we've worked, uh, when I was down there in particular, they did, uh, they had a this thing called the haircut bill in 2014, where they took 10% of the, uh, the, the, the um, uh, gaming funds that was uh, the premise of the referendum. Uh, and, and so, um, and prior to that, in 2004, they took a portion of those funds to solve the workers' comp deficit reduction fund. And so that was um, uh, in, in not only that, you know, the coal and then a lot of and self insurance and a lot of other things were wrapped up in that. So when when uh, that was being paid off, the, and the coal got got theirs back, and it, um, you know, it, it was fair to for us to. The, the state to keep its promise, and so that was one of the legislations of the bills that, that passed. We got that money back. Uh, there's a bill that's been passed to get the 10 percent back. Uh, the, it's passed the House the last two years from the haircut bill, but it doesn't pass the Senate. But those are things where I think it, it's it's the, the, there was a premise of those referendums, and it's fair for the state not to do a bait and switch on the county on those referendums. And um, actually, when I was in law school, there was a, uh, I, I had uh, drafted an advanced deposit wagering, which is basically online online uh, wagering on horse racing. It was being conducted uh, um, based off of the federal law. And so just to capture some of that money to uh, uh, put, put it in the industry rather than um, just allowing it to happen without the state getting any any take on that. And so that ended up passing in 2020. It took about 10 years for that to pass. Joe, so, I think uh, I think I remember doing some interviews with you about the, both the haircut bill and the advanced deposit wagering. Yes, uh, yep, that, that's when we're down there. And agriculture is a really big part of our county's economy. Um, you know, uh, although I'm on the horse side of our business, we have a huge agri agriculture committee that we need to allow to thrive in this county. Um, family farms are really challenged every day, uh, whether it's national or global factors like commodity prices uh, and, the, and the crop yields to to just the regular everyday stuff, inflation, um, and the negative impacts of Bidenomics and the threats to our basic freedoms. Um, you know, those things are really important. You know, I was just reading the, the paper the other day, the Jefferson County Development Authority, you know, trying to trying to work and, and get, uh, you know, do what Loudoun County is doing in terms of vineyards, in terms of maybe getting a USDA processing plant here. You know, uh, um, well, I, I'm certainly... The thoroughbred breeding and in, in racing industry is my background, and my family's been doing it for generations. You know, there's there's all sorts of other things on the broader uh, agricultural industry and and farming uh, that that you know uh, I think we need to do an all of a, the above approach to see what works best for for Jefferson County and, and West Virginia. Bill. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Joe. Uh, I'm going to go back very quickly to uh, make a statement about the West Virginia Republican Assembly. Uh, 
I don't, I've never heard of it. Uh, Rob said he had never had. Summer Barrett, who's one of our loyal listeners uh, and knows a lot about Republican politics, said she did not know anything about it. Uh, but looking at the ones they've endorsed, it uh, seems like everyone they have endorsed what is what I would call the extreme to the right candidate. Uh, uh, so that's, that's the group that they're supporting. But going back to a point you raised earlier, land use and businesses, those are more county commission uh domain than it would be under the delegate but something that is under the delegate would be home rule what would your what's your position regard to home rule for the counties well that's a, that's a good question and uh, i did a little studying when, when you asked me that at the debate just to make sure i had my facts correct and i, I it brought me to bob bastris who was one of the professors at wvu law school he did a whole law review article on the whole history of home rule in West Virginia through 2020. And essentially where I come down is uh, for, for um, I support it in terms of land use planning, in terms of, uh, you know, local government, um, you know, f- funding, uh, as long as there's no tax increase, I'm, I'm, f- I'm for it. And then in terms of education, you know, but in terms of, you know, where uh, allowing sanctuary cities or, uh, allowing towns or counties to pass ordinances which further restricts your constitutional rights i'm not for home rule in, in, in those categories so or you know there was a question that came up at the naacp debate or whether allowing counties to increase the minimum wage and i, I don't think that's uh, appropriate either so you have to have some level of uniformity throughout the state uh you know on those core issues and core values you can't just allow the, the towns and the municipalities to do whatever they want but in terms of land use planning in particular i think people in, in jefferson county uh, are, uh you know that is it's appropriate for the people the jefferson county commission um you know to make those decisions uh, when we have countywide zoning they're going to make probably better decisions than some you know folks down in charleston or washington dc in terms of uh how best to uh, develop our comprehensive plan with you know public input i think that's the, the big complaint i get from a lot of folks is things there things that happen and there's not been adequate notice or public comment period and i think that's what you know that's part of the reason i'm running is i i think um, we need to provide more transparency accountability and integrity at every facet of government from from the local to the state to the federal matt miller Joe, let me ask you about the way that the legislature has handled budgets in recent years and the flat budget approach and then the excess at the end of a year uh, kind of being able to be used to to backfill and then, of course, uh, uh, for various other projects and so forth. Uh, What are your thoughts? Are you in agreement with, with that line of thinking when it comes to our budget and our economy? Well, that's that's a very uh, great question. I'm not sure we have enough time to, for for me to fully answer it, but I think the the way that the, the tax debate has taken since the Republicans have been in charge of the last eight to ten years, they finally come to the consensus with the income tax reduction. And there's triggers in the law where if there's a continued responsible budget, there will be continued income tax decreases. And so I'm all uh, I'm all for that. Um, in terms of the process of getting there, like this year, the, the, there was some uh, tiff with the, the federal government based on these COVID funds, and so that's why they they're going to address that, I guess, next month in special session, uh, because there was this huge, you know, 500 million dollar question mark in the budget, and so I think that's more of like a one one time sort of exception. And this year, I don't I, I don't think that ought to be the model going forward every year i think you ought to try and uh you know get the budget done in the in the regular session but you know it um so that's that's i'm I'm trying to understand your question a little bit more of of, you know the, the way the budget operates it's you know we have you've got to get the 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 folks on on board um in the Senate and the House and the governor, of course, to to all agree on whatever the legislation's passed that session and then to pass ultimately pass the budget. So um, I guess you just have to – it depends on the circumstances there, but I would, I would prefer to, to get that done in the regular session. I was just asking along the lines of I know there are some who may look and say, well – 
the, the, these numbers kind of get inflated in regards to we're, we're holding things at a flat line and, and at the end there seems to be all this surplus, yet at the same time we have issues in our foster care system and other issues within areas of our state government that maybe that funding should be going there and and, and that budget not being held flat but, but maybe moving in a different direction. I just wondered your thoughts in that. So, I mean, I guess it all it all depends. You know, uh, it, it, there's you know there, there was some good legislation passed this year with the foster care to to provide more of a uh, public uh, you know put it online so all the stakeholders can can uh, agree there or not agree but have all the information they need in a very uh, modern uh, modern way. You know, there's there's more than six thousand children in our in the foster care system and there's only you know less than 200 guardian ad, ad litem. So there's a huge case overload there. So, you know, I certainly th think, you know, more resources there would would probably make sense um, to address those caseloads. But, you know, it, it's it's a delicate balance there of, of balancing the budget. And, and I think uh, there's there's something, that's something I want to, you know, if I'm fortunate enough to prevail in, in this election and, and represent the folks uh, here in, of Jefferson County down in Charleston, I, I, I want to go, and, you know, just like we've done on the, um, the DHHR, breaking that into three separate agencies to get a better handle on their budget to see where efficiencies can be made, do the same thing in education and, and across all forms of government to see where we can uh, maybe be more efficient in terms of our spending so we can provide the taxpayers relief, especially, the you know, people are struggling out there. You know, people think we're this wealthy D.C. suburb. You know, I, I was down in Ranson in the last couple of weeks and, 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 and across the county there's, you know, we have a lot of people struggling, and, and it's tough to pay their bills. And, and uh, you know, um, you know, I want to do everything I can to, to, to help the folks out um, in, in terms of providing tax relief. That's one of the tax specific tax reliefs that I'm campaigning on is is doubling at least doubling the homestead exemption, so we can help our seniors and our disabled vets out. Joe Funkhauser, our guest here, candidate for the West Virginia House of Delegates District uh, 98. This would be the Paul Espinosa seat, correct, Joe? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Joe, in Jefferson County, obviously, solar farms uh, are an issue. And they created uh, a, quite a situation with the Jefferson County Commission, and this is clearly more commission-based, but it is a big part of the Jefferson County turf. Uh, your thoughts on the direction of solar farms in Jefferson County, and uh, especially and significantly if you think that there needs to be any legislation at the state level? Uh, great question. It's obviously come up. There's, uh, you know, uh, Cable Town's part of part of my district, uh, and and uh, you know, everyone I've talked to, um, uh, they they do not like they do not like it. There's obviously concerns in terms of having the appropriate emergency services if and when something, uh, you know, if those things catch fire. Um, there's legitimate concerns on the. Um, the way this initial ordinance was passed to allow these these large solar facilities, you know, I don't have any problem with uh, folks putting it on the roof. And, 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 and frankly, you know, I understand the the other the other so side of it with farmers and and, 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 you know, farming is a tough business, no matter what type of you're in. It's hard to, to make a profit there. Uh, but I think the. There's certainly room for improvement in terms of the way that the ordinance was crafted in terms of, you know, there's a term, um, with, you know, to to enhance the buffers where there's more consideration given to the adjoining or adjacent property owners. There's a legal term called constructive taking. Um, where if a government passes a regulation that, that, that harms your, your property valuation, you know, it's considered a Fifth Amendment violation. It's considered a constructive taking. I'm not sure it's cost that precipice, but I think there's a, a reason why there's so many people are frustrated about this. And so I think, no, I don't believe that the state it should become in, involved in terms of the Jefferson County's land use uh, ordinances. I think there's plenty of tools available. I think the issue, this is a county commission function, and the issue there is to, um, you know, hold the county commission accountable and, 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 and you know, have the public, um, you know, be more, you know, the county commission should, should 
you know, they have minimum requirements, but sometimes I think the county commission ought to do more than the minimum requirements and have, you know, town halls and do do more than what's minimumly required under the state code to get the public on board, to, to, to let them know what's happening, to get their input before you get this backlash. And I think some, you know, there's some folks that, that you know, in terms of if I were king versus if I were, you know, what the, now that the, the, the horse is out of the barn, so to speak, on this thing, what is the legal and appropriate remedy to these things? You can't just say, well, I don't like them and, you know, you can vote, vote, them, vote them gone. You know, that's not going to happen. You've created an estoppel situation. And so what, do you, the, what is the best path forward based off of what has already occurred? And, and I'm not hearing many of the folks that, you know, uh, that uh, have these legitimate concerns, any any specific solution other than, well, the county commission needs to improve their ordinance. Um, so um, I, I think there's a consensus there in, in terms of, um, but I think there's there's also some, you know, electioneering, electioneering politics and sort of running the Rockwell playbook and, and trying, to, trying to scapegoat certain people um, uh, for electoral gain. And Joe, uh, 60 seconds, tell our listeners and viewers why they should vote for you for the House of Delegates. Well, growing up and living in Jefferson County with our population doubling in my lifetime provides insight and understanding in the issues and challenges of our community. Um, you know, Jefferson County has gone from 30,000 to 60,000 people in my, my lifetime. It will probably probably double again in the next 41 years. Uh, my background as a business and civil lit- litigation attorney uh, my demonstrated public service conserving Jefferson County as a member of the Jar- Jefferson County Farmland Protection Board, being an advocate for West Virginia's thoroughbred industry in Charleston and here at home, um, and pledging to zealously advocate for Jefferson County's interests, to meet with all interested citizens of the 98th District to hear their concerns and their ideas for improvement uh, are, are why I'm running. I care about this county. This is my home. This is my hill to die on. And I'm offering Jefferson County a choice, um, and, and I believe I'm the best choice to represent their interests in Charleston based off of my lifetime experience and my skills and abilities. Joe, great. And I, I, respect, I respectfully ask for your vote in this upcoming primary. If you want to know more or you want to contact me, please go to joeforjefferson.com. Joe, great to talk with you this morning. Best of luck to you in the upcoming election. All right, Rob. Thank you so much. Thanks, Joe. Joe Funkhauser in the 98th at 903.